felt warm and unexpectedly light. It was a funny sensation, as if I were floating through a warm, sunny day. I didn't want to open my eyes and find out where I was. I just wanted to keep drifting. I'd been stuck at the Deluxe Mansion for three weeks now, with no end to my stay in sight. Not that I didn't enjoy the company of everyone. Even Royal was slowly losing his grumpy edge with me, and I kept myself busy with chores and cooking practice. But still, I yearned to be free. Maybe that's what this feeling was. Freedom. It felt nice. As I tried to settle into this sensation, I heard a faint female voice call my name. It was gentle and non-threatening, and I forgot my previous determination to ignore where I was. Opening my eyes, I looked around with my blurry vision, but there was nothing except a vast white background. Aura! The voice continued beckoning me. As I looked back and forth across the whiteness, a small figure soon cut its way into the nothingness. I drifted towards her, only then realizing that neither of us were actually taking steps as the distance between us vanished. Is this a dream? Who is... It's Nomine. <laughs> the girl looked young, but she was beautiful. Her eyes were vibrant blue and her hair a cascade of long, golden locks. Still coming closer, she extended her hand to me. I feel like the right thing to do is take her hand. But I think we're on Royal's route for sure now. So I think this works the same way as Cinderella Phenomenon, where it's like one set takes you to one ending and, one, and if you pick the opposite, it goes the other way. Like this seems like the right thing to do. So I'm going to pick the worst of the two options and that'll get me like the worst ending, which is just a normal ending. So that's what I'll do. Sorry, Gold Deluxe. Next time, I took a step back. Don't touch me! Hey. I felt myself being pushed away. My eyes flew open and I saw that I was lying on the cold, hard floor. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Whose bedroom did we sleepwalk into? Where am I? I looked around. This was definitely not my room. Oh. <coughs> I kind of thought maybe it was uh, Dion's room because it's like very rose themed, but I guess all the boys have them. What are you doing here? Royal loomed in front of me with an angry look on his face. I... Did you know that you almost hit gold? Oh, it's this gold locks room. Okay, that makes much more sense. You know that porcelain dolls are very delicate, right? Porcelain... doll? Aww. The most beautiful doll I'd ever seen sat on the velvet settee in front of me. Hold on. So she really got turned into a doll. Oh dear. But she can't walk and talk, I guess. Golden curls cascaded down her shoulders. Her blue eyes seemed to stare right at me, but she looked sad. Aura, please. I glanced around the room, wondering if she was the one calling out for me. Did you hear that? Hear what? The doll. She talked. Oh. Impossible. She has never... Royal's words cut off as a bright light burst out from the doll's body, swallowing the room and blinding me. Am I... still dreaming? Hey! How long are you going to play dead, stupid girl? Huh? I quickly sat up, feeling a sharp pain as I hit my head against something hard. I almost fell back over, rubbing at the sharp pain. Ow, 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 ow. Ah! Exciting! Hold on. Gosh, you look so much like Varg. Oh, pulls me old heartstrings. Oh, such a beautiful boy. I opened my eyes. 
My entire body froze at the sight of silver eyes and a handsome face glaring down at me. His dark hair dangled between us like icicles. Oh, you really ought to have that head of yours checked for loose screws. Ro royal I stared at this handsome male, gobsmacked. What? Royal? Y you're royal? Who else did you think I was? How hard did you hit your head? Realizing that he was still hovering over me, he shuffled back away and rubbed the back of his head. What just happened? Oh, hello, everybody. I guess I heard the scream and we're like, yo. All right, we're all human again. But I guess not Goldilocks. Aw, oh, you guys are all cute. Suddenly, the door flung open, revealing more unfamiliar humans in a mansion supposedly populated by toys. Unlike the guy calling himself Royal, all of them sported my mind-blown expression. There were two guys, both with striking blonde hair, probably related to their sister. One's hairstyle was short, while the other was tied into a small ponytail, complete with a green ribbon. There was a similarity to their handsome features, as if they were possibly related. Hmm. A petite girl with her pink hair tied to the left, and a beautiful lady with long dark hair and a fierce atmosphere about her stood next to them. My cheeks flushed again. I began to doubt my own appearance with so many attractive people in the room. And the most attractive of all! Look at that waistcoat thing. Oh man, you look great. And gloves. There's no way this guy was not an inspiration for Fritz Varg. Look at that, amazing. Royal balked, his irritated look replaced by genuine surprise. You guys too, but how? We'd like to ask you the same thing. All of us saw the same bright light, and the next thing we knew, we were humans again. The party at the door all murmured agreements and nodded their heads at one another. After a pause of awkward silence, Royal swiveled to shoot me a fresh, venomous glare. For what? I stiffened. I was only used to the teddy bear version of his glares, and those did not prepare me for those silver eyes and his picturesque human face. You have a lot of explaining to do, girl. Tilting my head to the side, I could only manage a quiet groan in response. Aww. Even I didn't know what was going on. After a while, we all gathered in the dining room to discuss what happened. We should all have some tea. <laughs> it took some time because soon after returning to human form, everyone felt the raw pain of hunger, something they had not suffered in seven years. Whoa. Do you guys even have food? Oddly enough, their fridge had also been affected by the magic of the curse. There's toys in there? I just opened the fridge and I can find whatever ingredient I needed. Oh, that is like a really nice, that's not even a curse. Man, if you had a fridge that just had the ingredients you needed for whatever you wanted to make, that would be amazing. So I've been practicing a few recipes since I came here. I had been the only one who could try them, so it felt good to be able to finally share my cooking with everyone. After setting the table with a variety of quick but filling dishes, I settled down at the far end and watched with relieved happiness as they helped themselves to the dishes. This is divine, Lady Aura. Certainly on par with Miss Rua's cooking. Sol offered me a soft smile as he picked up another fork full of risotto and indulged in his meal. Dion grinned, grabbing a fresh helping of cheesy potatoes and omelette. Oh, that sounds so good. I think this is even better than hers. My smile widened at their compliments. Meanwhile, while Royal was gathering strawberries in the yard. <laughs> I didn't think I had surpassed my mom just yet, but it felt good to hear their praise. My mom's the one who taught me everything. I'm not as good as her yet, but someday I'll surely become the best chef in the whole world. There was a snort from the other end of the table. <laughs> whole world. Quite the lofty delusion, girl. I glared back at Royal, puffing up my cheeks. <sighs> I noticed that he wasn't holding back on his portion, so he couldn't think my food was that bad. Okay. Yeah, if he's not holding back, then he thinks it's the most delicious thing ever. Jeez, thanks for breaking this young maiden's heart, Grumpy Bear. 
Hmm. He then returned to his meal, pointedly avoiding my eyes. After everyone had eaten, we, dis we started discussing everything from the beginning. As it turned out, the curse hadn't kept everyone from aging. They were now seven years older. Oh yeah, that's actually uh, a relief. That shocked everyone. I was only ten when the curse began. She paused, looking down at her hands, still trying to comprehend the years she'd spent as a doll. Well, congratulations, you've managed to avoid the worst of puberty and just, like, got to the end, almost. Dion leaned forward, snuggling his chin into his palm. I thought that said smuggling. I'm like, how do you smuggle your chin? A playful grin spread across his face. Who would have thought that our little crybaby would become such a fine lady? Flushing a deep red, Lily pressed her hands into her lap and stared down at the table. Y you're embarrassing me, Lord Dion. <laughs> Dion waved his hand in a dismissive gesture. How many times do I have to tell you to simply call me Dion? We're practically family now. Flinching, Lily shook her head vigorously. I can't do that, Lord Dion. You are a member of the Deluxe family, and I will always address you formally. With a shrug of faint defeat, Dion bobbed his head in Sol's direction. Then how about Sol? Even now, you call him Prince. I had a smile behind my hand as Lily's cheeks went scarlet, and her voice sounded more panicked than before. That, that, that's... Well, Prince Sol doesn't mind, so... Oh, uh -huh. really, Sol? He turned his head towards his brother, his smirk widening and his perfect teeth flashing. Sol's smile was gentle and unassuming as he lifted a cup of tea to his lips. If Lady Lily wishes to call me Prince, that is fine with me. I mean, who wouldn't be okay with that? Although I have to admit that it is quite embarrassing. I am no prince, after all. I feel so torn. I kind of want those two to end up together, but... Because they got matching green bows and things. But we're going to have to date him and take him away from her one of these... The next time I play through. Maybe in the true ending they'll get together. I can hope. But you are! He offered another smile at Lily's outburst, causing a new outbreak of red to stain Lily's cheeks. She fidgeted where she sat, glancing at Sol from beneath her pink cotton candy bangs. Since I had arrived here, I've noticed that Lily acted shy around Sol. Oh no, you're making me even more feel more guilty. In the few conversations we'd shared, she would speak highly of him and marvel over his princely charms. It was cute, though Sol seemed oblivious to her crush. How lucky are you, little brother? Still teasing, Dion reached over and snagged a biscuit from Sol's plate. Sol didn't say anything, his eyebrows lifting in confusion. Hmm? <sighs> Never mind. He stretched his arms forward and waggled his fingers. Anyway, I'm quite pleased that I grew up in such a handsome young man. Just like before, a royal snort answered Dion from out of nowhere. <laughs> He lifted a hand to his ear, brushing some of his dark hair back. I never expected Royal to look so attractive, with his dark complexion and piercing silver eyes. Thankfully, he hadn't noticed that I had been staring at him all through our late night feast. Too bad you're still so short. Oh, shh. <laughs> That's just a low blow right there. What's wrong with short people? And you're still as scary looking as ever. In an instant, the mood shifted. Both Royal and Dion snapped to attention and didn't dare continue their banter. Miss Maria lowered her hand from her mouth and paused, her lips pressed in a prim line. It still baffled me how young Miss Maria looked. I was expecting someone much older, too. She was quite beautiful. Her raven black hair was long and silky, her skin smooth, and she seemed more physically fit than me. When she had been introduced as the nanny, I had assumed Miss Maria was nearing her fifties, like a harsh grandmother that spared no one. Anyway, going back to the original topic. Royal, you're saying that the light appeared when Aura was near Lady Gold? Yes. 
He glanced at me for answers. His expression crinkled with annoyance, as if my existence was troublesome for him again. I thought we were on okay terms, but with everything that happened, maybe our relationship status was reset. An odd sadness tightened my chest. But Lady Gold has yet to return to normal, so it means that the curse is still not broken. Oh. Huh. Miss Maria crossed her arms as she considered her statement with care. An air of disappointment passed over the table. Despite the fact that everyone was human again, the unending loss of gold hung over them. Even I lost my smile. Gold was important to everyone here. Restoring everyone but her made me feel as though I had failed, despite not knowing what I did, or if I did anything at all. We'll see if grabbing her hand next time helps. Hmm. Before the toy maker finished casting the curse, she said that she had sealed gold's heart in a place where it could be protected. And only when her, her, when her heart is returned to her shall the curse be broken. I looked up at her in surprise, trembling a little under her firm stare. Her gaze was intense, even though I knew she wasn't angry with me. Perhaps Aura holds the key to finding Lady Gold's heart. My mouth dropped open. I hadn't expected her to reach that conclusion. Me? C could it be? That Lady Gold's heart is stored within Lady Aura's? I spun towards Lily, feeling even more confused and surprised. I had felt a strange warmth while I was in Gold's room, so if Lily was right... Uh, I shivered a little. After a moment, an evil aura developed near the other end of the table. When I looked, I saw Royal with a frightening expression on his face, his smile bordering deranged. Uh, What? <laughs> Don't tear my heart out like a wolf, man. Can we, can we do this in a better way? Now, be a good girl and give me your heart. Don't worry. I'll be very, very gentle. Ah! I shifted away and hid myself behind Sol, who was seated beside me. Reaching back, Sol patted my head and chuckled. <laughs> a royal is only kidding, my lady. Though his expression reverted to something more normal, Royal wasn't smiling. There was no indication to whether he had been serious about it in his deadpan appearance. No, I'm actually serious about it. <laughs> with another cough, Royal's eyes went wide and he read the back of his neck with his hand. I shifted back to my seat, clasping my hands in my lap. Miss Maria's power was amazing to behold. Sorry. Nodding, Miss Maria let out a sigh, her head tilting to the side. Oh. I'm sure we'll get the answers we seek soon. Setting his teacup down, Sol nodded, though his encouraging expression was dusted with uncertainty and sadness. I do hope that you are right, Miss Maria. We can hope. Oh, there he is in all his beautiful form. That wants to tear our heart out. What if he was in love with Gold Deluxe? But everybody's in love with everybody here, and I'm just, like, a big variable that doesn't need to be here. The discussion carried on well into the night. No one seemed tired, though I suspected their internal clocks would eventually catch up to them. The sleepiness came and passed for me, but with the excitement over what had happened, it was easy to stay awake. Warmth filled my chest as I listened to their stories and saw how happy they were to be human again. Even though I do not believe I did anything to bring them back, it felt good thinking I might have played a part. Somehow. After a while, I noticed that a certain grumpy bear was missing from the table. I blinked a few times, not, trying not to distract anyone else, so I struggled to remember when I last saw Royal. Eventually, though, my curiosity got the better of me, and I politely excused myself, claiming I finally felt tired enough to sleep. Once I was free, I set out on my secret quest to locate Royal. Yeah, I'm like, he's probably in her room, right? After a few minutes of walking, I came to the hallway leading to Gold's room. There was something odd about the door handle. I crinkled my brow in confusion, sneaking closer to investigate. The door was ajar. I thought Royal had closed it when we left. 
I snuck around the door, hoping that I was as silent as I thought I was, and peeked inside the elaborate room. Kneeling before Gold, with his right hand nestled underneath her left, was Royal. I could only see an outline of his profile, but from the downward curve of his lips and the way he tipped up his head revealed his sadness and devotion to her. Aww. He reminded me of a knight who was loyal to his princess. Yes. Yes. Me too. Yet regretful that she was still beyond his reach. I heard his voice fill the room. I'm sorry. I saw Royal bow his head, his shoulders drooping as though he were carrying a heavy weight on his back. You must be tired of hearing my apologies every single day. But what else can I do? We continue to move on and live while you remain lifeless. This is all my fault. If only I... Royal lifted his head again. The cloud outside drifted away, unfiltering the moonlight and letting it shine on his figure. There was something so lonely about the shadow that reflected upon delicate golden carpeting. The guilt I bear is overwhelming. I fear you'll never forgive me. If I'd been stronger, maybe this would never have happened. There had been a few times when Royal was weak and subdued, but I had never seen him look so broken since I'd been in the mansion. Biting my lip, I remembered what Royal told me before. My wishes are only for that person. So that person is her. I finally understood. Royal would probably deny it if I asked him directly about his feelings, but watching him just now was more close to the truth than any answer he, he'd give. Royal was in love with gold. I don't want to break this up. Don't make me do this game. I don't want to be breaking up relationships. I unconsciously drifted back a step, pressing my lips together to keep a sigh from escaping. It suddenly felt wrong to be standing there, witnessing a scene meant only for the two of them. I knew I should leave before Royal found out I was eavesdropping. Still, there was an ache in my chest, intensifying with every quickened beat of my heart. Maybe, just maybe, if I stayed a bit longer, I could find out why Royal thought this was his fault. What should I do? Ugh. Ugh, don't make me do this. <laughs> I would leave. It's probably the right thing to do, which means we should stay and listen, and then we can get caught out and he can get... Please just get angry at me forever. <laughs> I don't want this. I don't want this relationship. I leaned closer and listened, holding my breath as he spoke. What kind of knight am I if I can't even protect my princess? <sighs> I heard him sigh. This is all my fault. It's not your fault. Gold's voice echoed in my head. Uh, that also makes me wonder, like... No, because that would be weird. I'm like... My thought process was... Do we have feelings for Royal in a way because Gold is a, kind of with us? A part of us? But then I realized that would be really strange going forward with her brother, so I don't think that's the case. <sighs> I jumped as I found myself saying those exact words out loud. Oh no, we're being controlled. It's not your fault. Royal turned in my direction and I began to panic. I urged my body to run away, but it refused to move. I was frozen to the spot. Aura. Royal marched towards my direction, anger clearly etched in his face. Uh, I was just passing by, so, uh... Royal grabbed my shoulders and glared hard. How long have you been standing there? I... well... I quickly thought of the possible excuses I could give, but as I stared at his enraged face, I knew that he will not believe in any of them. Sorry. I heard everything. I stepped in when Royal tugged at my braid, fury flashing in his eyes. Such an annoying girl. 
I'd seen him get annoyed at me so many times, but this time I could tell that he was genuinely angry. Why don't you just mind your own business, girl? My patience for you is running out. I... Useless freeloader. I snapped then, yanking my hair away from him. Well, excuse me for being a useless freeloader, Mr. Grumpy Bear. First of all, I've been helping around the house as much as I can to pay for everything. If that's not yet enough, then I'll just pay the rest of my debt when the curse breaks. If only this one coward here who keeps sulking and getting depressed most of the time would help break the curse. I'm not a coward. Yes, you are. Apologies are only words. They are meaningless without actions. What do you expect me to do, then? We have no idea where that toy maker is, and we're stuck in the mansion. I'm completely powerless. Then live! Royal was taken aback by what I've said. He stared at me, speechless. You said that all you can do is apologize to her, that you feel bad that she still remains the way she is right now. But have you ever considered her feelings? She'd been a lifeless doll for seven years, while the rest of you can freely move and talk. You're supposed to live your life for her. What you're doing right now is only making her sad. I know I would be. I balled my hand in a tight fist, lightly punching his chest before he gave me back to my room. Boof. You idiot. I sat on the edge of the bed, hugging my knees. Stupid royal. My anger subsided into concern and sadness. But I said such harsh words to him. I tried to shake off the guilt that I was feeling. He was the harsh one, not me. There was a knock on my door, but I ignored it. After a few seconds of silence, the knocking began once again. I know you're in there. Great. He's the last person I wanted to see right now. I'm coming in. Try if you can. I made sure to lock it. My confidence shattered as a sharp click broke my only barrier. I've forgotten Royal had keys to most rooms in the mansion. Hey. The door! What are you doing here? Get out! I threw a pillow at him, but he dodged it and advanced towards me. I threw another pillow, but he caught it with ease. You've run out of things to throw, girl. Really? There's still the bed, you know. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> I had no chance against him in a sarcasm match, which only soured my mood further. Darn you and your good looks and your sarcasm and your beautiful love. What do you want? If you're here to whine to me about being useless, then... I'm here to apologize. Of course, you're, you're here to apologize. What? I stared at Royal, stunned, certain I could not possibly have heard him right. What are you gawking at me for? Who are you, and what did you do to Royal? Very funny. I am not joking. <laughs> Royal paused, bowing his head in reflection. I'm sorry for everything I said earlier. My emotions got the best of me. I shouldn't have said some of those things. I could tell he was trying really hard to make up with me. I should apologize as well. It was my fault that you got angry in the first place. A familiar smirk crossed his lips. <laughs> Such a troublemaker. I know, you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> we shared a quiet laugh. Royal lifted his head then. Our eyes met. I hope you won't tell the others about what you saw today. Don't worry. I won't. Good. 